Hello, my name is Prithush Muthukumar and I will be presenting our paper, Satellite Image Atmospheric Air Pollution Prediction Through Meteorological Graph Convolutional Network with Deep Convolutional LSTM. This research is supported by NASA and is done on great collaboration with the City of Los Angeles and OpenAQ. Air pollution is truly the silent killer. According to a recent UN report, 92% of the world's population breathes in polluted air, and air pollution contributes to 7 million deaths annually. The major causes of air pollution include diesel engines, ports, motor vehicles, and industries, to name a few. There are many adverse health effects, including an aggravated risk to cardiovascular and respiratory illnesses like COPD, asthma, and emphysema, and it has been found that air pollution leads to shortened lifespans globally by 1.8 years on average. In the metropolitan city of Los Angeles, the most prevalent form of air pollution is nitrogen dioxide, or NO2, which is caused by the burning of car emissions. Nitrogen dioxide is at its highest in Los Angeles, totaling 27 million tons in the atmosphere, which doubles the next leading U.S. city. We will be focusing on nitrogen dioxide in Los Angeles County for our research. Before we explain the solution, we must first explain the problem at hand, a spatiotemporal problem. Air pollution and the prediction of air pollution relies on both spatial and temporal patterns. It is spatially correlated because air pollution travels through the atmosphere and affects and is affected by pollutants in its surrounding areas. It is temporally correlated because air pollution and hour in the future depends on the patterns of air pollution currently. Traditional approaches to predicting air pollution focus on either spatial or temporal correlations through the use of convolutional neural networks and long short-term memory models, respectively. Recently, an advanced model called the CONV-LSTM has been developed for a variety of spatiotemporal problems. CONV-LSTMs are similar to traditional LSTMs, but perform convolution within the cells instead of the Hadamard product in long short-term memory. We have used a sequential ConvLSTM structure with multiple layers in our research. There has been previous work on predicting air pollutants in a variety of settings. Graph neural network approaches take advantage of the strong capabilities of GNNs to learn spatial and distance-based correlations. GNNs are similar to traditional neural networks, but use graphs as inputs. The weights of the nodes in the GNN are trained using embedding vectors that carry information about the vertices and edges of the input graphs. Because GNNs can adapt to and learn from changing spatial patterns rapidly, this approach is often used for weather and meteorological prediction. Other approaches use ConvLSTMs to predict spatiotemporal air pollution. ConvLSTMs use videos or time index series of images as input. However, there is little research on machine learning models that predict spatiotemporal air pollution using both meteorological data and satellite imagery. Meteorological data certainly has an impact on the ability to forecast air pollution. Liu et al. found that air pollutants are highly correlated to other air pollutants and meteorological features like wind speed, wind direction, precipitation, and temperature. Their study found that 675 of the 896 sensor locations they surveyed reported an increase in carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and PM2.5 when there was a significant decrease in wind speed as well. Moreover, a recent model which used meteorological and air pollution data to predict air pollutants showed an improvement over previous models that use only satellite imagery, with an 18% reduction in MSE. Our model uses a combination of meteorological data and air pollutant data in the ground and in the atmosphere. We use ground-based meteorological sensor data and remote sensing atmospheric satellite imagery. We have outlined the major goals of our model. We will be predicting spatially continuous nitrogen dioxide in Los Angeles County over a large amount of time periods. Our model will learn the correlations of meteorological data through a graph neural network architecture. Our model will also utilize spatiotemporal correlation in satellite pollution data through a ConvLSTM structure. We will then combine the graph neural network and ConvLSTM structures sequentially so that we use one model's output as an input to the other. We will be focusing on a more complex version of the GNN structure, the Graph Convolutional Network, or GCN. 
Similarly to how a graph neural network resembles a traditional ANN, the GCN is similar to the traditional CNN. GCNs use convolution filters on sets of neighboring nodes. GCNs use weighted directed graphs as inputs, where the graphs contain sets of vertices and edges. Here, neighboring nodes are defined as nodes that are connected by edges with the smallest weight. The GCN then learns the feature embeddings on the vertices and edges of the graph. It is important to note that we can construct and feed graphs of meteorological sensor data for the time period that the data is indexed as. For example, if we are using daily meteorological sensor data, then we can construct graphs of meteorological sensors corresponding to the data of each day and use GCN to predict daily data in the future. We will also be using a technique that was introduced by Wu et al. in their paper Inductive Graph Neural Networks for Spatiotemporal Krigging. They introduce a spatiotemporal interpolation technique that can be used on graphs to create denser, more complex graphs by interpolating vertices and edges. They train their interpolation network by hiding portions of the sparse input graph and using the remaining vertices and edges to learn the interpolation for the hidden portion. After training, the interpolation network can successfully create nodes and edges from missing data. We will be using this technique to interpolate our sparse input graphs created using meteorological data before we use it as input for the GCN. Thus, the GCN can learn patterns using a more dense interpolated graph of meteorological data. Our meteorological data was collected from the Iowa State University Meteorological Aerodrome Reports, our meter data set. Meter data collects meteorological data at municipal airstrips and airports around the world. And for our model, we will be using the data at 17 different sensor locations or 17 airstrips and airports around LA County. These sensors measure ground level meteorological features including wind speed and direction, precipitation, air quality index or AQI, relative humidity, and much more. Our satellite imagery data was collected from the Sentinel-2 satellite that orbits along a 290 kilometer orbital swath and has on board a 13 band spectral imaging instrument. We will be using the imagery of the nitrogen dioxide over a thousand kilometer squared area of Los Angeles County. Due to the orbit speed of the satellite, the temporal frequency of the data is 46 hours, and we used over five years of data from March 2015. The specific band we used images both general particulate matter, shown in the bottom figure in a white cloud-like structure, and nitrogen dioxide depicted as light blue structures. The satellite imagery also images the ocean and land cover in the thousand kilometer squared area of Los Angeles County. The goal in satellite image preprocessing was to isolate the nitrogen dioxide imagery in the raw data. We removed the land cover, ocean color, and general particulate matter, which is a white cloud-like structure, and set those pixels to black or 000 in RGB. The raw resolution of our data was 5400 by 5400 pixels, but due to the amount of data and the complexity of our model, we downsampled our image to 40 pixels by 40 pixels. We left the RGB values of the light blue structures, which is the NO2 imaging, as is. This is because the intensity of the pixel values directly correspond to the intensity of the NO2 at that location. So we can easily translate from the pixel value to the raw value. You can see the difference between the raw image and the preprocessed image in the upper figure, where the raw image is on the left and the preprocessed image is on the right. We then constructed our set of images in a format that could be used by the Convelis TM. In the five year time span we selected, there are 870 raw images of NO2. We then bundled our images so that we use roughly 10 days of data in the past to predict 10 days of data in the future. This means we use 5 frames to predict 5 frames, since each frame or image is 46 hours apart, or roughly 2 days apart. Each of these bundles or samples was created by staggering 5 consecutive frames. Thus our input was a 5D tensor with 870 bundles of 5 frames each, where each frame was a 40 pixel by 40 pixel image with 3 channels corresponding to red, green, and blue. Our label was then created by shifting our feature set 5 frames, so that we use frames 1 through 5 to predict label 6 through 10, frames 2 through 6 to predict label 7 through 11, and so on. A visualization of our training set and bundling method 
is shown in the bottom figure. We have also performed pre-processing on the raw, ground-based meteorological data. First, although the raw data temporal frequency was hourly, we selected every 46 hour of data to match up with the satellite imagery frequency. Also, it is important to note that although our raw data recorded various meteorological data with their varied units, the data set we used recorded the percentile of the recorded data against the maximum value recorded for the previous year. For example, if the maximum rainfall in 2019 in a given location was 5 inches, and for a specific day in 2020, the actual recorded rainfall was 1 inch, then the data set will show a value of 0 0.2 for that data in 2020, corresponding to 20% of the max value of the previous year. This way, even though each meteorological attribute has different units, they are normalized in the data set. We then create a multidimensional weighted directed graph using the meteorological data. First, for every 46 hour frame of the meteorological data in the data set, we define a 40 by 40 grid, where the boundaries of that grid correspond to the longitude and latitude of the geographic boundaries of the satellite imagery we are using. We then map the 17 ground level sensors to this grid based on the geographic location of each sensor. Then, for each meteorological attribute of each day, we use the Stellar Graph Python package to create a graph bounded to the grid where each vertex value corresponds to the stationary meteorological percentage value from the data. Here, stationary means the attributes that are specific to a sensor location, like relative humidity, AQI, temperature, and air pressure. The non-stationary attributes, like the distance between two sensors and the U and V components of the vector of wind created from the recorded wind speed and direction, are assigned as weights to the edges of the graph, since these are more like the correlations between two or more sensors as the values of a specific sensor. Thus, for each 46 hour time period, we have a set of weighted directed graphs that have encoded meteorological data for that time. Our model contains three parts. First, we have the meteorological GCN, which first uses the spatiotemporal Kriging technique to create a denser, more complex version of our multidimensional weighted directed graph inputs. We use the GCN to learn the feature embedding vector of the predicted meteorological data. However, we cannot yet use the output of the GCN as an input to the Convelis TM since the output of the GCN is not in image or grid-based format. To convert the output of the GCN to a grid-based image of high-level embeddings that have encoded information about the geographically bounded graphs, we use an unsupervised learning model from the Stellar Graph Library. The final part of the model is the Conv LSTM, which uses the high-level embedding image output and the pre-processed NO2 satellite imagery to predict images of NO2 in the future spatially continuously in Los Angeles every 46 hours. The upper figure shows a visualization of the training of the adapted spatiotemporal Kriging technique we use to create a denser meteor meteorological graph. The left column shows the ground truth values of AQI for two frames. The right column shows the predicted AQI values for the two frames. The stars are the hidden nodes of the process and the circles are the remaining nodes. Note that these images in the figure are actually just one dimension of the multidimensional weighted directed graphs. The bottom figure shows a visualization of the high level embedding output of the unsupervised learning graph representation learning model. This is inherently not human readable, but valuable information about meteorological graph data is embedded within the values. Since the output of our model is a set of images over time, we run into some unique problems with traditional evaluation metrics. Traditional methods like RMSE, MSE, and MAE would treat the images as arrays of pixels and compute the error between individual pixels of images. Thus, minor differences in the pixel values like 1 to 2 unit shifts in the RGB values will be magnified in the error. The traditional error metric will not truly model the error of the output, so they are suboptimal for the models with image-based outputs. In the field of computer vision, researchers have developed another error metric more favorable to image outputs called SSIM, or Structural Similarity Index Measure. It measures the general trends and large structures of images and quantifies the visible similarities 
on a 0 to 1 scale. An SSIM value of 0 means that the two images are completely dissimilar, and an SSIM value of 1 means that the two images are exactly identical. The formula for calculating the SSIM value between two images is shown below, where P denotes the pixel values of the predicted image, and P hat denotes the pixel values of the ground truth image. You can see that the multiple normalization techniques like dividing by the standard deviation and means of the pixel values are used to model the error in a more general way. Here are the results of our model. On the right side of the screen, you can see three rows of images, where each row corresponds to a different frame of predicted and ground truth images. The first row shows the prediction on the left and the ground truth on the right of NO2 in Los Angeles predicted 46 hours or roughly two days in the future using roughly 10 days of data in the past. The second row shows prediction versus ground truth for four days in the future and the third row shows prediction versus ground truth for 10 days in the future. We can see that earlier predictions were more accurate than later predictions visually and also by the table results shown below. A gradual decrease in predictions accuracy over time is expected as NO2 data two days in the future is more correlated to data 10 days in the past compared to data 10 days in the future. The table below shows the SSIM values for the first five frames of the test set versus the corresponding predicted images. The other column in our model shows our pre previous model and SSIM results on the same location and time frame. Our previous model used NO2 satellite imagery data only as an input to a Convelis TM. Thus, we can see that using a GCN on meteorological graph data resulted in a 69.5% reduction in the dissimilarity error. These results are comparable to the most recent published work on predicting spatiotemporal air pollution. We have outlined some of the future directions we would like to take our research. We will be using the NASA imagery data from the MODIS and MERA2 satellites and the MIAC algorithm. These data sources provide higher spatial and temporal resolutions for many additional air pollutants like black carbon, sulfur dioxide, organic carbon, and more, as shown here in the visualizations of MERA2. We have developed a model using NASA data that recently recorded preliminary results that show an improvement over the model shown in this presentation. We also hope to predict other pollutants like PM2.5, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, and ozone with our model. We want to use a combination of ground-level air pollution sensors and atmospheric air pollution imagery for a wider range of forecasting coverage. Finally, due to the location of our studied area, which is Los Angeles, we think that incorporating fire and smoke data to our model can improve our results. This research project is sponsored by NASA and has been done in great collaborations with the City of Los Angeles and OpenAQ. Feel free to send us an email if you have any questions about our research. Thank you.